Hello there. Today we are going to be animating this Tusi logo in Adobe After Effects with all these drops and this tasty stroke and a lot of tricks here that you are going to be amazed how easy they are to do. Let's go for it. Kinetic Type Series by Hulk79. So, in a nutshell, what this is is just a, a Trim Paths animation that I have here. A little bit complicated, just a little bit. Uh, I'm going to tell you why uh, it was made like this. Uh, and then some layers on top, some adjustment layers with a blur applied. The drops are here, which are some paths in a shape layer with three paths also. And then this, and then the reference logo here with the opacity lower, lowered down to 35. The logo you can find it at Brands of the World, this fantastic web page here. If you look for Stussy, let's let's go back here. How is this set properly? After the founder, Sean Stussy. Do not say Stussy. No, say Stussy. Okay, so let's go back. We are going to start from scratch. So this is the law here for reference. Uh, I apply a fill just to differentiate from the animation. And yeah, I'm going to go closer to it. I'm going to grab the pen tool here and I'm going to start uh, looking at it and I want to make it so that it is just uh, as if when you write uh, at one go, you know? So let's go. And the way it was made, I want to create this kind of hesitating or, you know, as if the writer is kind of having doubts uh, when going uh, forward. I'm going to change the stroke to another color so I can see it. It's not important at the moment and I'm going to get, uh, get rid of the fill here. Something like this. And if you stopped, it's just a matter of clicking on the last point here and I'm going to keep going. Okay. Another thing that I f find a little bit annoying is when you have, for example, here a blue color and the layer is the same color, it's, it is very difficult to see the path. So it is a matter of changing here the color to a green, for example, and now that's way better. So again, click on the last point and keep going like this. I'm going to go up here. Uh, here I'm going to make a little bit of a crazy thing. Going down, going up very cleanly here. Another thing that you need to understand is that we, is that we are going to edit this uh, shape later on. So maybe for you it's better to keep it um, simpler in a way uh, and then adding more points. So I'm going to keep it this la last part very simple so you can see how then we are going to add points there. And in the same layer here, I'm going to change the name. In that same layer, if I select it and start drawing again with the pen tool, it is going to be all stored here within the contents. So again, I click on the last point and I keep going like this. And then it's going to be a matter of clicking out of it, selecting the layer, and I'm going to make these points like that, so that they are kind of funky looking. And you are going to say now, okay, this is looking like uh, very bad, but I'm going to start doing some magic here, okay? So my reference is going to be on the top. I'm going to lower the opacity to something like 32, let's say. And then I'm going to get rid of this background layer that I created before. Uh, it's not needed. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new adjustment layer here, like this. And this is going to be my overall blur. 
And I'm going to apply here a fast blur. Like this one here. I'm going to put it under my reference so that it doesn't affect it. And I'm going to, s let's start with a uh, two in the blur radius parameter. And now I'm going to do the, we are going to do the classic thing, which is applying some levels to the very same adjustment layer. And in the alpha channel here, I'm going to start dealing with these controllers so that we have like, let's go closer. We have a thicker line and that's going to work in relation direct relation with the fast box blur so if this is like a 4 for example uh, it's going to be thicker and you can see how this is going to the place I want it to be I'm going to select the layer with the path and I'm going to increase also the stroke width something like that and now if I have the pen tool selected and I select the layer Whenever I go up any of these points, I can move them around. So I'm going to start making it closer to the actual logo. And don't worry about these parts what, that are thicker because I have, I'm going to do a, another trick to create that effect. Also, you remember when I said, uh, if you need more points, it is very easy to do that, so it yeah it is just a matter a matter of pausing a moment on top of the path and you see that plus sign. So if you click now, I have another point to create more com complex shapes. So that's very nice. So yeah, that looks good. I'm going to create another point a point there. And you see how satisfying this process is. So now the next thing, I'm going to leave the animation for the last part of uh, this tutorial. Next thing is going to be create these thicker junctions here, which are like, uh, they represent like the, the ink, I assume, or the paint. For that, I'm going to create a new layer, a new solid in this case. Okay, this is going to be blur also. And this is going to be over that, over our blur, for example. Uh, and I'm going to turn it into a adjustment layer just by clicking here in this option. If you don't see that, you need to uh, make it visible by clicking on this button on the bottom, the toggle switches modes. So now, it is an adjustment layer so I'm going to copy these two effects and paste them on this layer and the next thing is going to be I'm going to select the ellipse tool and I'm going to start making masks so that this effect here only affects those parts okay I'm going to click F to increase the feather and I'm going to put this under the over blur so you see what's the point here the point is that I created this secondary kind of blur but it's located in very specific points so I can keep going just by with the layer selected and the ellipse tool I can keep creating these uh, masks which are going to concentrate or isolate the effect to only those parts so let me keep going if you want to rotate any of these you click twice and you have the bounding box to rotate it so you have much control so now I'm going to this is very cool uh, I'm going to make or hide at the reference so that we can see how this is going this is looking pretty good okay obviously you can keep uh, tweaking things here for example I'm going to increase the fast box blur 
so that all feels a little bit more organic. Let's say a six. And now it's going to be a matter of playing with those controls on the alpha channel. That feels very nice. So let's start animating and then we're going to do the drops, okay? So, you know this very easy trick where we go on any save layer, we can add a trim paths like this one here. You also can access this panel on the top of your interface, like so. I'm going to apply the trim paths and if we open here, we have different options. I'm going to change this from simultaneously to individually. And then you, you'll see that the order of this is important. Bear in mind that if you change the order of this, that's the order that uh, the trim path is going to be working on them. At the beginning, it's going to be a zero in end. And if we move forward, let's say like two seconds, for example, it's going to be 100%. So let's preview that. And you see that that's, that's fine. That's not bad. But I'm going to change those into, with right click or F9, into easy ease keyframes. And I'm going to introduce, you see, you know, the order is not correct. So those little dots that now are there, they need to be on the bottom. So I'm going to move them. And then the, the bar here of the T, it needs to be there. So I think now, now it's the correct order. Yeah, now it's working better. And one thing to give it a little bit more of personality and realism is you can uh, with this being like the main animation from 0 to 100 you can create in more difficult parts of the writing like another for example let's say imagine that you want to portray that the writer is having problems here in this part of the, of the writing so if you create a keyframe there and even you play uh, with the curves it can be felt as if it is kind of stopping there, in a way. So it's a little bit of a pause. You see how cool is that? So you can keep going like, uh, even like here in the graph editor, you can select the pen tool and create some other moments where you know the writer is hesitating and stopping very briefly so that you, get, you give it a, a nicer rhythm. So that's fantastic. I'm going to add the drops. So the drops, uh, it is a very, very simple thing. And they are going to be, for example, from the thicker parts, like so. I'm going to change the color to so, so that I can differentiate them from the main drawings. And I'm going to make them way thinner. So these are our drops and I'm going to leave them there. Then I'm going to, I, I would need to, to move them below our effects, but for now that's, that's okay. So I'm going to keep just drawing. Okay. So I click out and I click again on the layer. Another one is going to be here. I'm going to keep going. I would say that for the sake of uh, showing how this works, that's okay, that's enough. So now I'm going to animate them in the same fashion, which is adding a trim pass and making them, uh, instead of simultaneously, they are going to behave individually or be animated individually. So here we are at the end. I'm going to create a keyframe at 100 in end. And around here, when, when everything is already like written, it's going to be a zero. So 
something like that. This comes a little bit early, so it's going to be a, li a little bit later. Uh, yeah, that's very good, very nice. So now it's a matter of moving that particular layer below our blur adjustment layers. Uh, maybe they are a little bit too thick at the moment. So let's try and make this thinner. Yeah, I think that works. But so that's super interesting, like with the different colors. But I'm going to do a different thing, which is like in this overall blur adjustment layer, I'm going to apply a fill so that it is all the same color. And then I think like the it's going to look better if I apply also our roughen edges, this effect here, so that it feels a little bit like distorted, which I, I love, you know, this kind of analog look. It can be a little bit less, maybe. And I'm going to duplicate this. And this one is going to be the scale. I'm going to be scaling it down a lot and in border is going to be at two, for example. So yeah, I think that's that. Uh, obviously, you can make this as complex as you want, but I wanted to create something that uh, feels like kind of real strokes. And the whole thing is like, yeah, we are working with a, with a shape layer, with clean paths, and uh, everything looks very digital, but from the moment when you start applying these uh, different blurs and messing around with the edges of this uh, stroke, everything starts to look very nice. So I really hope that you found this kind of long tutorial in informative and you learned something. Uh, thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one. Series by Hulk 79.